This is a really significant week for us here at Biddulph Grange. Uh, we've got a paleontologist in the gallery at last doing some work for us. It's dusty, it's noisy, it's dirty, but it is so exciting. Who knows what we're going to find? We can only see what the wink brings. I normally work in museums. Here I am at a National Trust property and that's unusual. You don't normally find geology and fossils like this in a National Trust property. But this is a unique space. What I'm doing here this week is removing all the old mortar from the wall. And we've got to be quite careful. We do need to remove the mortar because we need to set new specimens into these spaces on a secure backing. But there are some clues in some of this mortar as to what would have been here before. We're in day one here and what I've had to do is remove the mortar from the holes. What is interesting is not only are these holes actually really very shallow, so these must have been thin specimens that went here, but these two are right next to one another. They must have been, they must have had some kind of association because otherwise this specimen would have been up here. So we've got to figure out what two specimens we can put back there. There aren't really many clues here as to what else would have gone here, but we do have some very interesting examples further up the gallery here that I can show you. What we have here is a nice hole with some imprints of a plant fossil. But I've got to remove this mortar and that will destroy the evidence of what was there before. So what I've done is I've put this rubber that was very soft and fluid when I put it in and then it let it set and then I peeled it away and we now have a permanent record of the backside of the plant fossil that was in this hole. A paleobotanist, that's a person who studies ancient plant fossils, will be able to look at this and say with some degree of certainty what sort of species this was, what sort of age it is and where it's from. And I've got these other two specimens here that I've done the same with. We can actually see some quite good detail of where the leaves actually attach to the stem of the plant. This is the largest hole that we have in the gallery. And this is in day two, so it's a fairly early fossil in the sequence. And because it's such a large hole, it's difficult to say really what would have been here other than something that's early on in the fossil record. But what we do have in this instance is a really nice clue. We have some of the rock from the rear of the specimen and what we can do with this rock is we can look at that underneath the microscope, maybe break it up into lots of pieces, look for the really, really tiny micro fossils that are in here that will give us a clue as to where this specimen came from and therefore what sort of fossils would have been in this slab. The great thing is we've got some of the original specimens from the Bateman Gallery. They were taken off the wall and kept at Keele University for a while for safekeeping. Now we've had to clean those up and conserve them and they would be ready to go back on the wall. But the problem is here, the environmental conditions aren't that good. It's too damp and too cold here in this particular gallery for them to last the sort of time that they need to last for decades and decades. What I'm doing is moulding and casting those original fossils so that we can put those replicas on display. And so this one here, this bivalve mollusk, I've replicated and it will go up here, the other way around, into this gap here. Sometimes it's quite easy to tell what the specimen was that was on the wall. What we have here is the mortar left behind from a clearly a large skull. This might look very strange, but this would have been a labyrinthodont skull before the time of the dinosaurs. This is another replica that I've made. This is of the Chirotherium footprint, and it's one of my favorite specimens of the original specimens that were in the gallery because Chirotherium was known as the invisible dinosaur because we only know it from its footprints but it's not even a dinosaur, it's just an early reptile. And you can tell by the shape of the footprint, it's got four digits here and it would have only had three if it was a dinosaur. And very, very few body parts of this sort of animal have ever been found. And yet there are hundreds or thousands of footprints. We have 10 original fossils from the gallery that we need to conserve now and over 50 fossils that we need to replicate to go on the walls of this gallery. But before we get to that glamorous side of doing that, we've got a few structural things to sort out. We've got the floor to finish off inside and I have a little damp problem with the building too. This building had been used as a workshop after it had ceased to be used as the geological gallery. And they'd had benches and work had been carried out on the, over the floor and it had become badly damaged. So we took two complete diamonds out here and replaced with the new stone and we sent some samples of the old tiles off and we had new tiles made to match. 
The hole was opened last Friday to check on the damp which has been penetrating through the building, causing the floors and the walls to sweat. What have you um, found? Well, the big problem seems to be that the existing wall of the geological gallery is cantilevering over the wall below, so it's not particularly well supported. The front of the building is virtually floating in, in midair. Yeah, I think we need to excavate a much bigger hole to find out what's going on below. Yep. And right. then possibly get the engineer back to, yes. to design yep. a suitable foundation, foundation. for it. Now to suddenly get this work underway and have somebody as important as our paleontologists here making such a great impact on the gallery and the property as a whole. The staff are completely enthused and even the gardeners are now starting to ask us lots and lots of questions about what this means for the whole of Biddle Grange Garden and just the sheer support from our volunteers and our staff and our visitors to this project has been amazing and it's so great to reward them with this work finally taking place. Thank you.